a gun on the kitchen table. And then he sits back in the chair opposite. And I say, Michael, Jesus Christ, what are you doing bringing all this trouble to our door? But he doesn't say anything. And then, and then I realise that in Ireland, trouble doesn't need a postcode. It's, it's ever present. And then I get to remembering about the first day we moved into this house, into our new life. 20 years ago. I put Michael on the floor and he ran around in circles and circles as fast as his chubby little legs would carry him. Like a wind-up toy he was. And then I look at the linoleum and I'm saying, Jesus Christ, this will have to go. Faded little flowers and beige baskets. That went out with the ark. I'll have to get a new one. And I'm watching my husband single-handedly push the kitchen table through the back door. The one that has got an alley on. Placed there. By my only son. I remember the discussions have been on round this table. Nothing mundane like, how's your day been? Oh no, not for Marilka Kenny. No, not for me. You see, my dad was a whisperer. Yes, he used to tell us all about the atrocities and the famine and the absent landowners. And he spoke in whispers as if every word could be heard. And as if not by shouting it, he can make all the ill doings and bad things go away or just simply disappear. Now well, see, that was not for me. No. I was going to talk about whatever I wanted to. And to whoever I wanted to. And to each and every member of my family. My husband came from whispering good God-fearing people and forgivers. But that was not for me. Oh no, I would not forgive. Nor would I be silenced. So he would watch Michael while I went down to the box sites for meetings. I did not want my son to have to go cap in hand to the mayor of Derry to ask for social housing, like my mother-in-law had done before, and a lot of good that did her. No. So we're here, writing <laughs> with this feckin' fading linoleum, with the little fady flowers in the feckin' beige basket, and we can't even vote. We can't even vote. I was there, you see. Standing side by side with all the other poor bastards in that October morning. Mammy, why didn't you just run? Said six-year-old Michael. To which I replied, running had no longer become an option. We were going to stand with our black brothers and sisters in America and the oppressed students in Mexico. They didn't want peace. They wanted to quell the rebellion that had started in our hearts. Fellow Irish, fellow humans, fellow oppressed, pawns, an imperialist chessboard dispensing out pain for fear of losing the scraps that they'd gained at the boss's table. 
scrapping like seagulls over a dropped bag of chips. What? What's what you said, son? But he hadn't said a thing. Did I put all this nonsense into his head? Is that why there's a god on my table? The kitchen table. I bore birthday cakes and Christmas dinners and endless bowls of soup. From here, I used to preach to him about civil rights and to have courage of his conviction and not to listen to his God-fearing whisper and da who used to preach caution. Son. Like I remember coming home as a girl with blood on my forehead and my dad cradling my face in his hands. No good will come of it. You're going to bring all this trouble to our door. Just like I had said to my kid. Only there was no response. He slumps forward. And his head is on the table. And out from under his undercoat, I can see the blood drip, drip, dripping. Well, I'm in a little pool on the linoleum. flowers <laughs>